Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 23rd, and it's a beautiful summer morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Somewhere in the mid-70s right now, we're getting up to the mid-80s, sunny, a uh, few clouds, but just, just a really nice day. Got all my uh, gardening yard type stuff done yesterday, so I'm not going not gonna to be doing too much outside today, but maybe, uh, maybe this afternoon after lunch I'm going to sneak in a cigar because I haven't had one in a oh it's been maybe about a month so we'll see how that goes uh, join some 8 o'clock coffee and we'll get to the pipe in a minute um, I want to talk a little bit about the tobacco and stuff but uh, let's see before we get started I just want to say th uh, thank you all for your uh, your kind response last week to uh, my request for prayers and kind thoughts for Daniel Leslie and his family. Uh, I have not heard anything about his uh, his dad, uh, and I checked in with Cliff, who is the guy that let us know originally about this, and he didn't. He hasn't heard anything. I don't have any way of getting in touch with Daniel, but if anyone does know him well and you know has his email address, it would be kind thing to do to just reach out to him and see how he's doing and uh, let him know that we're all thinking about him. So uh, yeah with that let's let's get going here. I got a bunch of stuff I want to talk about today. Probably going to get in a little bit of trouble today but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've got my Boswell shot shell which uh, pipe I love given to me by my dear friend Jack. Jack if you're watching I can't find you. I want to say hello. I want to talk to you but I can't find you my friend. And it's uh, it's driving me nuts. So I'll keep looking. You keep watching, buddy. Uh, in the in the Boswell, I've got something a little different today. This is some Saint Bruno Ready Rubbed that I believe it was opened in December of '22. And this was the tobacco of the week selected by the folks on uh, on the live stream. So that's what we'll be smoking. If you want to get in on the tobacco of the week selection, join us every Friday night at 8 p.m. right here on the channel. Uh, we always have a good time. Great group of guys, and uh, I'd love to see that grow more. But you know, to be honest with you, and I've said it before, if only one other person showed up, I'd probably have a 90-minute live stream. I just, I just enjoy the company of friends and smoking a pipe. And it's a good time. So, if you got the the time on a Friday, come and join us. And I've been thinking, I want to do some more, uh, I, should, I should be careful what I say here because I don't want to get myself roped into anything. I want to do some more uh, of those uh, chats with pipe smokers type things, but I want to do them focused and I, I got some people in mind that I want to pick out and see if they're interested. Uh, what I'd really like to do. And you can help me with this if you can think about it. I'd like to try to get some some known known. How do I put this? Some people that are pipe smokers but are not really part of the YouTube pipe community but are known. I'm not talking about celebrities. Like I don't want to get some Hollywood celebrity pipe smoker. Although if there was one out there, I'd be willing to try to get in touch with them. Um, but you know, people that are known for whatever reason and uh, maybe it's another YouTube channel maybe it's something else on social media maybe it's some minor celebrity type thing I don't mean minor in a bad way uh, and and they're known for their pipe smoking so if there's anybody like that that you can think of uh, let me know all right so I got the St. Bruno loaded up and I'm gonna get it lit on there we go Yeah, I'm going to talk about country music and other things. So, you know, it it's getting weird. It's getting really kind of weird. And I don't know if anybody else is noticing. I'm sure other people are noticing this. But, man, we seem to be somewhere between an Orwell novel and Soylent Green. with a little bit of Dostoevsky thrown in for good measure. Hmm. 
I'm going to choose my words carefully here. Apologize, the sun is coming through the window, as you can tell, so there's going to be lots and lots of smoke. I'm going to choose my words carefully here because I don't want this uh, immediately taken away. Uh, although it will go up to rumble uh, pretty quickly as well. So, But yeah. Very strange stuff going on. So, let's start off with movies. So there's this movie called Sound of Freedom. And you may not have heard of it because the media will not report anything on it. It seems to be an innocuous enough movie. It's it's about a guy. It's a true story. Uh, and I haven't seen the movie. So full disclosure, I have not seen it. I want to see it. And uh, I'm working on going with my buddy, uh, the movie maker, to, to set something up to go see it with him. Um, this, it's based on a true story. It's about a guy who goes and, and tries to save a bunch of kids that are uh, caught up in a child sex trafficking ring. That's, to the best of my knowledge, the, the plot. And he's successful at saving a few girls. Um, why this movie would be in any way denigrated, I don't know. But it's become sort of this... You know, they, they wouldn't release it for years. Uh, Disney was somehow involved, and they, they tried to block it. Um, finally got released, and it is doing fantastic. It's, it, in terms of earnings, it's been the number one movie uh, for the past couple of weeks. It beat out the release of Indiana Jones, which is, a, by all accounts, a, a steaming pile of crap. Uh, it beat out the release of, uh, I believe it's a new Mission Impossible movie, uh, which I... I don't know. I haven't seen any of the Mission Impossible movies because they have Tom Cruise in it, who, by all accounts, is a steaming pile of crap. Um, it's beating these in terms of earnings. More people are seeing this movie than the top Hollywood releases. And yet, it's bad. We don't want to talk about it. Um, they're sabotaging theaters, apparently. Like, people go to the movies and, and they get there and... Um, the movie starts and then, oh, the air conditioner doesn't work in this theater, or we lost electrical power in this theater, but the six other theaters around it are working just fine. Uh, bomb threats, all kinds of stuff going on. It's crazy. Over a movie about how bad it is to engage in child sex trafficking, this is this is a problem? I don't get it. I, it it's really starting to scare me. And then this morning, I'm, I'm looking over the, the Instagram, which I shouldn't do, but I do. And I say I shouldn't do because it, it sucks me in pretty quickly and I lose time. Not as bad as my wife, but yeah. I'm looking over the Instagram and I, I find this um, story about this fellow uh, Jason, I believe it's Jason Aldean is his name. He's a country music fellow. I don't know him, uh, don't know anything about him other than the story that I read. Uh, but, you know, I like country music, but I like old country music. So I like, like old time music, uh, bluegrass, uh, Bob Will, Willie Nelson, you know, all the way up to maybe like sometime in the 80s. Sometime in the 80s, country music got weird. It became guys in hats with affected accents singing pop rock songs so i'm sorry if you like it that's great it's just not my thing it's not my thing but i do like the the older stuff and i listen to it quite a bit now in all fairness i don't listen to any modern music uh so it's not like i'm picking on country i i, I think rock and pop and all that stuff is just utter garbage these days uh you know i'll listen to i i like uh, a lot of stuff you know, I like classical and jazz. That's what I listen to mostly. But I have no problem like putting on a Ramones album. Uh, I I do not. I'm not a purist and I'm not a snob when it comes to music. But the stuff that's around today is 
not very good. So anyway, um, I see this story about this Jason Aldean fellow, and I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, and it might not even be Jason, I apologize. But you'll know who I'm talking about in a minute. And he's got this song, uh, which is called Not in a Small Town. And it is currently the number one song, I believe by iTunes. I don't know if there's like a country music billboard type thing. I don't know where it ranks on that, but, but it's the number one download on iTunes, which is a big deal. Um, and country music television has banned it. They will not show it. Uh, Huh, this is interesting. Let's let's see what this is about. So I go to YouTube, I find the official video, uh, and I, I watched it this morning and I listened to it. Now, musically, it's you know, it's it's modern country music. I I didn't like it at all musically, but the lyrics were good uh, in in that they presented a case, and the case was basically the big cities are going to crap. There's, there's rioting, there's looting, there's burning of buildings, there's shootings, there's crime everywhere. Don't try that in a small town, because we're not going to take it. Small town folk don't like that stuff. Okay, what's wrong with that? I don't understand why that is a hateful, racist, negative point of view. But apparently that's what the media has labeled it. And, you know, nobody wants to watch this song or listen to this song. But then I look at the comments section on the video. I didn't read them all because there was an awful lot. But the first 20 or 30 or so were all highly positive. Highly positive. I couldn't find a negative comment. So, what the heck is going on? The number one movie is being ignored, is being basically uh, censored in a sense, if, if this story about sabotaging theaters is true. The number one song in country music, at least by Apple iTunes download metrics, is banned and you're, you're not supposed to listen to it. But yet, it is the number one. And therefore, apparently most of the fans of that music, most moviegoers, want to see that and believe that it is good quality. So why in the world are we being told it's not? Who's deciding this for us? You know, if, if the majority doesn't decide what is good, who gets to decide that? It's a little scary. And if you don't like Sound of Freedom because for some reason you think child sex trafficking is fine and dandy, I don't know. Or if you don't like Jason Aldean because you think his, his music is in some way offensive, fine. But think about what's happening. You know, set that aside and just think, who's deciding this? Who, who's, who's deciding this? You happen to agree with it. But what if it was something you disagreed with? There's somebody making this decision for you and it's not the majority of people. I don't know what that means. But again, Orwell, Soylent Green with a dash of Dostoevsky. St. Bruno is actually surprising to me. Very nice stuff. And I say surprising because when I opened it up, I didn't like it very much. Didn't hate it. It was it's good leaf, good tobacco. The the topping just was was a bit overdone, and it's it. On the live stream, somebody said it was Lakelandy. Um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it was a bit overdone. It was a bit much for my taste. Somebody said it was Lakelandy. If it is, it's more to that Tonkin bean side of things. It's not floral, uh, but I don't know if that's dissipated or my palate's changed. But man, I do like this. It's uh, it's got very prominent dark fired Kentucky, but not like old dark fired level. So it's it's good. Burley's in there. Uh, there is flavoring, but again, it's not like hit you over the head with it. It's a nice treat. It's not something I want to smoke all the time. Uh, won't be. Oh, I got a lot of it actually. Somebody sent me a couple of 
I think they were four pack packs and they sent me two of them you know because it comes in pouches I think I've got seven pouches upstairs in the cellar and sorry I cannot remember who it was that sent that it was a long time ago it was a very kind gift Yeah, so I wouldn't, I think I probably have a lifetime supply is what I'm saying, because it's not something I want to smoke every day. I'm smoking it this week because it is the tobacco of the week, as chosen by you. Uh, I'm kidding, no. <laughs> I hope people realize I don't take myself seriously most of the time. Uh, yeah, but it's good stuff. So, I got some pictures to show you, some, some life updates here and, and stuff that's been going on. Uh, and I hope the first one, and I hope it shows up, is a picture of the garden hall from yesterday. There we go. Look at that. Um, this is this is um, a collection of things. So down at the bottom there, you see we've got a yellow cucumber, a couple of tomatillos, and off to the left there are some uh, heirloom watermelon radishes. And then in the colander there, we've got the last of the early arugula. We've got a handful of ground cherries and a handful of uh, golden cherry tomatoes. So not too terrible. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Oops, that jumped too soon. That's not at all what I wanted to do. Oh, well, what you going to do? Let me get back to the camera, and then we'll talk about the ugly basement picture. There we go. <laughs> uh, the, the hotkeys... OBS has really messed up their, their hotkey system, and I don't know how to fix it. So. so that was the garden update. Sorry you got to see the, the gross basement picture before I explained it. So the reason that picture is in there is we've been having a lot of fun with our sidewalk replacement project. I think I told you we have to replace all of our sidewalks, driveway, and walkway on a corner property. This is massively expensive. And it's, we got to coordinate multiple things. So we've got some trees very close to the, to the sidewalk. Uh, my wife's theory is that the roots have lifted up the, the sidewalk and that's why we have to have it replaced. I don't actually think that's true. I think the roots may have loosened it and there's been a lot of frost heaving. But anyway, I had to have a tree surgeon come out and look. And he said, eh, it's fine. Just put the sidewalk in. <laughs> so... For my wife's peace of mind, we convinced him to come out once once the concrete's out and take a look. And he said, "Yeah, if there's any roots that shouldn't be cut, I'll I'll mark them for them." And you know, they do what they have to do for the structural integrity of the sidewalk, and we'll see what happens. That sounds fair. So we got that fixed. Uh, fixed. We got that covered. The other thing is the sump pump line. Now, I've told stories of my sump pump in the past. The line goes out through the wall, underground, through some landscaping, and then it appeared to originally go <clears throat> under the sidewalk and into the street. And there's a couple of houses around here where when it's raining, you can see their sump pump is pumping into the street. But what now happens is, and I think it's just because of soil erosion, there's an exposed pipe at the end of the landscaping that's broken. It's one of those gray ABS pipes, and it is broken at the end, and that's where the sump pump empties. And there's the pipe that goes under the sidewalk, but actually the concrete is cracked, so you, know, you can see the pipe there, but there's no connection to the sump pump. So I thought we had to have this pipe, we had to have a trench dug, dug graded, put under the concrete, and you know, so that when they could come in and do the sidewalk, everything would be fine. Well, apparently the borough doesn't allow you to go into the into the street anymore, and it has to go into the landscaping, which is fine. I mean, I'd rather the water go into the landscaping than into the street anyway. So, so the guy, plumber, some pump expert comes out and he looks at it and says, nah, it's all fine. Don't do anything, which would be you know, my dream scenario. Uh, my wife, though... I wasn't home and she decides, well, no, no, that's not good. Let's have them go in and look at the sump pump. Now, my pump, it's been something I battled a few times. You know, I've had a few floods. I replaced the pump, which was the original pump 
in this house that's you know, 60 some years old uh, it was the original and was still running but it it had stalled and, and created a little bit of a flooding bar it flooded the basement but when I unplugged it plugged it back in it started up perfectly again 60 some years old pretty impressive I replaced that with a brand new very powerful uh, I forget the horsepower on it but it works great pump installed that and in that process, I discovered that, um, so we had a, a, a pretty significant water problem in that corner where the sump pump is in, in terms of the wall getting wet. And I had always thought it was because the line didn't go connect into the line that's coming up in landscaping, uh, or at least there were some breaks in that line or something, because we would see water coming out, but just assume that's why it was happening. So I installed the new sump pump and I took that as an opportunity to replace the line outside. But before I did that, I had to connect the new pump up to the line that goes through the wall. And in doing this, I discovered to my horror that the line going through the wall was this corrugated, uh, almost like a vacuum cleaner hose kind of thing that they had just cemented into the wall. And I God only knows we did this and when it was done, I mean, it predates me, obviously, uh, the, the thing had become perforated. So what was happening is the water was being pumped out, but a significant amount of the water was coming down into the cinder block and was just pooling in the wall. So this was a real bad situation. Uh, so I had to replace everything from the pump all the way out through the wall and to connect up to the ABS tubing that goes under the landscaping. This was not a trivial thing because I had to dig a trench for it. It's about eight inches down. We've got very rocky soil. Uh, it was it was a bad couple of days. <laughs> and to connect the pump, I replaced the flexible hose because it obviously was breaking. I replaced that with um, PVC. And to make the angle work, because you know I've got a fixed place in the wall where the, the pump exits, where the pipe exits, and I got a fixed place in the floor for the sump well. To make that angle work, I had to use a couple of rubber couplings, which is not a terrible thing to do because you want an angle. Everything I read says do not 90 degree it because that will not work. You know you're, you're not going to have the power to pump that up. Do a 45 degree angle at most. So that's what I did. And we'll go back to the pictures here, and I will show you, because I think it's just going to pop up here. Now, you're going to see, again, there, this wall had water pooling in it for many years. Uh, it's a 60-year-old house. It, it looks awful. It's all scaly and stuff. I haven't descaled it. I haven't painted this yet. Event, someday I will, but just be prepared for an ugly picture here. Uh, yeah, so this was my handiwork. So those are pretty solid connections with the rubber couplings. Uh, it goes through the wall. I replaced the uh, corrugated, perforated tubing that went, went through the wall with a piece of PVC pipe. I dr drilled out a new hole through the cinder block to accept the PVC and mortared it in place. Ran the line down to the pump. Everything's been working beautiful. Uh, so there you have it. Well, my wife doesn't trust me, so she calls the guy in and says, can you look at our pump? And he does, and he says, well, the pump is great, but uh, I would replace that. I don't like that uh, tubing. I said, well, and Jen, she tells me this on, on the phone. I said, well, what doesn't he like about it? He's worried that it's going to come apart in a storm. I said, well, it's not like it's blowing around in the wind. What? And we've had heavy rains, and I, why would it come apart in a storm? Well, to make her happy, and assuming I get something better, I, I paid $400 to have it redone, and this is what I found when I came home that evening. Assuming the picture will advance. Yeah, so now I've got a 90 degree angle, which you're not supposed to have. I've got it hard piped in so I cannot lift the pump up to check it. Mine I could just take off one of the couplings. This is all cemented in place. 
Okay. And I'm out $400. But my wife's happy. So I guess I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know. What, what are you going to do, right? Ah, I keep doing that. I got to take that. Got to take that little blurb out so that I can stop showing you my French wheel <laughs> blog post every time I switch. Uh, yeah, so that's what that's the sump pump saga. And the other stuff that's been going on here is I, I'm, I'm still working on the uh, chest of drawers. It's coming really well. I did. I'll go back to another picture. I like showing you pictures. But it's hard for me to. So we're going to do a. Oh, now you saw a garden video. It's hard for me to change the pictures from this angle. Uh, so I had a problem. I had. I got to clamp up this uh, this cabinet, and I have a limited number of clamps that are big enough to span the cabinet. So I got some scrap plywood, and I made these uh, little things that I'm calling clamp extenders, and they work pretty darn good. Um, so here's the the chest of drawers. Uh, clamped. It's not glued. This was just a dry fit. And you can see one of those clamp connectors there in the clamp, clamp extenders there in the middle. So you basically have two clamps, one on either side, and they're working against one another by getting stuck into that little piece of plywood there. So I made a bunch of those. I have enough to do the glue up properly. Uh, what you're looking at is upside down. So the dovetail top is on the bottom, and then you can see the little drawer shelves in place in the bottom. So once that is once I glue it up, I'll be able to flip that over and start making drawers for it. So that is that. And let's see if I can now come back to me. Hey, it worked. Ah, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I got to get that glued up today. I hate doing complicated glue ups like that because there's the fear that it's going to seize up on you in the middle and you're not going to. We'll get it done. So that's my big job for today. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope, uh, hope it was a bit thought-provoking. Just wanted to talk about something that bugs me. And uh, you know, just think about it. Something ain't right. All right, folks. With that, I'm going to get off to my Sunday. Turn off my phone alarm here. Boy, we, we choreograph these things well, don't we? Get on to my Sunday. I hope you have a great Sunday and I'm looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. Enjoy yourself some St. Bruno Ready Rubbed if you got it. It's it's good stuff. Uh, and uh, with that, I will let you all get off to have a fantastic day. So until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.